Hey, greetings again. This is John Miller with the uh, Hometown Historian. We are at a Walmers church, <coughs> excuse me, in Indian Town Gap. This was uh, <coughs> founded in 1750 by Peter Walmer, who uh, moved here to the United States, well, at that time the colonies, uh, in 1742 from Germany. And uh, he bought 200 acres here uh, from the William Penn's two sons, uh, about 200 acres here, somewhere in that time period uh, when he got out here. And he decided he had missed uh, church so much, he wanted his children to have a religious education and to also be able to go to church. So he and his sons built a log structure church in 1750. Shortly thereafter, they built that structure and it lasted for about 100 years, and then right around the 1850s, it burnt down. So then this current structure was built shortly, shortly thereafter. What the exact date is, I'm really not sure, because I couldn't find anything on it. This was a, a church that I didn't know a whole lot about. It is cool. We had talked about Hill Lutheran was actually shared by Reformed and Lutheran. Uh, and this one is also shared. <coughs> this was not... <coughs> excuse me, started by uh, John Casper Stover, but by uh, Peter Walmer and uh, for his family. Let's see what this says here. Uh, it was 1850 when this was built. German Reformed and Lutheran Salem. Sorry, right there it is. Get that a little closer maybe. Lutheran Salem is 1850. So, yeah, really cool old church. I mean, let me put this out a little bit further. We're going to go check out this lower part of the cemetery that's closer. Somewhere over on that side is where the original log structure it might even be where the house is there now. But uh, <coughs> they, uh, when that burnt down, then they built this across the street. Uh, but I am finding out more and more, it seems like that uh, the uh, Reformed Church and the Lutheran churches. Uh, one of the viewers had also said out in their area it was quite common for a Reformed Church and a Lutheran Church to uh, share facilities. So still not quite sure. I haven't been able to find anything else on the John Casper Stover why he was uh, considered uh, to be a bit of a problem. Like he was obstinate, but he was also uh, controversial, and they don't really say why uh, he was controversial. So hopefully it's nothing bad. I sort of assumed maybe it was because he seemed to work the uh, different denominations together. But apparently that's pretty common with the Reformed Church and Lutheran Church. A lot more common than I thought. But uh, we're going to see how old this cemetery is. I would assume this is from like the 1750s um, when it started. So <coughs> it'll be interesting. <coughs> have a little bit of a cough. I don't have COVID. I just have, I've had this lingering thing. I'm going to have to go to the doctor at some point from uh, mowing. We have a bagger on our mower and it lets a lot of that grass dust out. And <coughs> just, I've had it from other years too. I had asthma and back in around 2000, I had, uh, I had done industrial floor work back then and somebody mixed some chemicals on me, didn't tell me, should have killed me, but it wound up burning my lungs, so I still have some damage in my lungs. So <laughs> when I have stuff like that happen, it's a miserable experience. And I've just been dealing with this for about four or five months. It is raining. I decided to come out filming anyways because I haven't really had a whole lot of chance to come out filming. And I just wanted to do that. So I'm guessing this. some of these look like they could be from Revolutionary War, but a lot of these look like just slightly later, just the way the stones are. This is uh, a Civil War vet here. Uh, looks like a Peter Zimmerman. A lot of these stones I have a feeling are going to be pretty hard to read. Some of these are, just look like they're German as well. And that, uh, that Peter uh, Walmer, they did come over from Germany, if I hadn't mentioned that earlier. Um, it didn't say exactly where, but... He, uh, it's impressive, like, you know, normally it's a church has started 
by the actual denomination, but he started his own Lutheran and Reformed church. And uh, here we are, you know, 271 years later, and it's still here, which is quite cool. And it says something about, and I, I never knew this church was back here. Um, I got a, uh, from Ralph Watts, my friend that we did the uh, Elk uh, County video that I just put up yesterday. This is cool, I like the writing on this. George, I believe it's Croft, 1808 to 1867. Um, he has a lot of stuff from the Lebanon County Historical Society and a lot of cool historical stuff. And I had bought, there was this road tour that the Lebanon County Historical Society had done in 1983. And I found some really cool information on there that I had no idea about, which one of them, I don't know with as hard as it's raining, if I'm going to try to go and do that. It's on a Joseph John's out in uh, Greenpoint Moonshine Church. Uh, it's a pretty cool historical character. Uh, pretty heroic guy, too. Uh, he was an escaped slave, so I'd like to do a video on him. But there's also an area out there which, sadly, you can't reach anymore called Africa, which was a settlement for escaped slaves in the 1880s. See, these are the type of stones here with these crowns I, I talk about quite a bit, are usually a Revolutionary War era. <coughs> these might be a little later, but... Uh, Anyways, it's an area that they have a cemetery on top of the mountain, but it sounds like it's an exploded ordinance out there, which Cliff and I are going to try to get a little more research done with that to see if we can find out whether it is something that's accessible, but it sounds like it's no longer accessible. Uh, but I want to do a video on that and just sort of talk about as well some of the things that find a little, makes me a little angry that those parts of our history, even though there's an ugliness to them, Here's a Walmer. That's Henry Walmer. I believe he was probably one of Peter Walmer's sons. If I remember correctly, I remember Peter, but it could be one of their sons as well. But being the oldest part of the cemetery, most likely, is um, one of his sons. There's another Civil War vet right there. But it's just a part of our history that even though there, it's obviously very ugly part of American history, part of world history in general, uh, it's still something that should be remembered and these people should not be forgotten. And unfortunately, Cliff had done a, a video on an abandoned slave cemetery, escaped slave cemetery that he had uh, found. And it was just, there's nothing there practically anymore. And it's just, it's a shame. These are individuals. It's really interesting carving on some of these something i haven't ever seen before i don't know what that is but it's pretty maybe it's a tree or something that's pretty neat but uh they shouldn't be forgotten these are people that in my mind are heroes and they should be remembered they should be celebrated and unfortunately you know their names are lost to history and a lot of times it's just negligence you know i would say in in the case of the gap they probably weren't aware that was there either because it's that's i lived back in greenpoint for 25 years and <coughs> excuse me i knew about joseph johns but i didn't know about this settlement until i got this driving tour and it said about this so i'm probably going to drive out there today just to see where it is if you can even access where the settlement was originally but being that it's gap land, you really can't go back in there. And it just, it is what it is. It's a shame because, you know, like I said, it's something that we should be celebrating. But unfortunately, a lot of that stuff is just lost to history. There's another Civil War vet. Looks like Jonah. Or, I don't know, it's like a, that's an odd, odd name. McGross, possibly. Some of these are just sort of hard to hard to read. It's just always just these old cemeteries are just so just neat. I mean, there's so much history here. There's just so many lives that were lived, and you just wish you knew more about these people, where they lived, what they did. You know, 
a lot of these people, how they came over here, you know, what their struggles were to come here. Here's a cool name, Christian Hunsicker. Definitely German or Austrian. Could be either of those. Always like the name Tobias. See, so that's I think that's another one that says consort of. And uh, one person asked, I always sort of assumed a consort was somebody that was like a lover or you know side side love, but actually it's uh, apparently it's considered more for like if somebody's nobility like a, a companion. It could be a wife, could be um, whatever, but that's just so here's another one. This is a very cool. I'm not sure what like a wreath or what that is, but these are just some pretty pretty unique stones. It's a shame that stuff sort a lot of them have these these stones that have the Bible on them, which I'm assuming is the Bible. I want to check out some of these stones over here because probably one of them is Peter Walmer. Um, and then we're going to conclude the video at that point. I'd like to spend more time on it, but it's, it is actually sort of cold with the rain today. Uh, I mean, it's nice that we're getting this, but it's also a little brutal on the hands. I'm not as manly as I used to be. I used to handle the weather a lot better, but then uh, the older you get. This is cool. Anybody that knows uh, Lord of the Rings, you guys like Proudfoot. You had James, Anna, Martha, and Isabel Proudfoot. James was 1810 to 1875. Anna, 1811 to 1862. Martha was 1842 to 1867. And Isabella, 1842 to 1862. So I'm guessing Martha and Isabel were their children. Mother, oh wow. Mother, mother and daughter our daughters drowned in the Swatera. Swatera gap break. Oh, dam break. Wow. I wonder if that was. Wow. Okay. In the Union Canal videos that I did, the uh, one that went north to Pine Grove. That dam broke and went right down through the valley, and it wound up killing a lot of people. They, they must have been killed all, yeah, they all died 1862. They got killed in that, because I forget how many people got killed in that, but when the dam broke, it went straight down through the valley there, down through Lickdale and down into this area, because this isn't that far from Lickdale. Okay, that was, that's a really quite a unique stone. That's a shame. Yeah. So Anna, Martha, and Isabella all passed away in that. It's always unique when you find stones like this. I mean, it's terribly sad, but you just, you know, these tragedies that happened. There's David Hester. Wow. These were all the children of Gabriel <coughs> and it was like Alfina, Hess, Bone. There's four of them, Lester, Allen, Isabella, and Adam, Adam Wayne. That was something that was very common. You'd see a lot of them. You'd, sort of in quick succession sometimes uh, children dying when they had smallpox go through or whooping cough or one of those different diseases back then that there's just if you got that that was you know scarlet fever whatever it was it went through communities it went through families yeah there's a whole nother cemetery over here much newer I'm not going to go over into that. Just like I said, if, if it wasn't for the the rain, I would do it. But I just, I'm getting cold. 
with this. And like I said, there's a stone over there that I think has some kind of prominence. Uh, I'd like to check that out. A couple stones here. It looks like this is like the earliest that I'm seeing are Civil War vets. Now there are some that are buried er much earlier than that, but um, it is uh, mostly from what I'm seeing the earliest is Civil War vets. Because you can usually, you can, I think actually over there, I think there might be a, a Revolutionary War vet circle. So that's usually, yeah, I knew there were some Naskingers buried out here because there's also a Moonshine Cemetery. That uh, the one, the second video I did was uh, right off of Nafinger Road. And it's actually, uh, one viewer pointed out, it's actually known as the Nafinger uh, plot because I wasn't sure what the plot was for that. So here's some like 1850s that they were buried. So there's obviously people that are buried there. This must be like the oldest part of the cemetery. So I'm assuming where that house was is right now is probably where the original log structure was right in that area. Because this seems to be a little bit older. You're seeing some of these stones with those crown tops and that's Revolutionary War ordinarily from what I've started to get to know the more I get to know about cemeteries still don't know a ton but you learn more and more all the time that's another civil war vet that almost looks like that's a Heilman and from the yeah it's a Heilman it might be a George George Heilman and there's that that Hill Lutheran uh, were over 140 uh, people were buried there from the Heilman family, just like generation upon generation upon generation of Heilmans in that cemetery, which is <coughs> pretty pretty unique thing. Usually you'll see a section of the cemetery that's a family and then, you know, interspersed between, you know, amongst the cemetery or other members, but the Heilman family was just everywhere. In that uh, in that cemetery at Hill Lutheran. So this is I can't. Some of these dates you just can't tell. So here's a John D. Zeering, born 1815, died 1905. A really pretty stone, pretty monument. In memory of Eve Barber, Barbara. There's another one that says consort of John Zeering. So you sort of wonder if these were people that came from Germany, some kind of oppression, and uh, were a form of. Now here's a last name, Ludwig. That's pretty cool. It's definitely German. So here's some, this is cool, some of these stones here, I don't know, they must have been cleaned off. But 1717, or 1772, 1841, it looks like, this is, this is a Revolutionary War vet. <coughs> That's a Johan, Johan Jacob, almost was like Decker, I'm not sure, but yeah, it's a revolution, a revolution soldier. It says on the bottom of his stone there. I'll get a little closer. That's just the, the writing is just intricate. Those must have been cleaned because the other ones are so dirty. I think there's another one up over there too that we'll check out. So we'll quick go over there, check that out, and then we'll come across here and see what that one stone is gives us a little more information about the church. Maybe it's where Peter Wilmer is buried. I'm thinking it's more like a memorial stone of some sort talking about the church. Now here's some more Revolutionary War vets. Yeah, that's, that's neat. In memory of Joseph Wood, Colonel, 3 PA Regiment, 1721, and he died December 12, 1788. Revolutionary War, 1775 to 1777. Buried Old Lutheran 
and Reform Cemetery, Jonestown, Pennsylvania. And there's another Revolutionary War vet there as well. And it just shows like all these stones here, like those ones over there that were looked like they were cleaned. That's what they used to look like. They used to be like that nice white marble. I'm guessing that's marble at least. It's another Revolutionary War. Okay, so there's quite a few Revolutionary War vets here. This is it's pretty neat. I sort of thought there would be, but you never know. Like I said, it's there's not a whole lot that's written about this that I could find. There's another Revolutionary War vet. And you think about it, there's probably other people buried here. It's just the stones like this is this is basically a field stone. These are field stones and Uh, so this is says Gerberich. This is Revolutionary War vet as well. Andreas, 1734 to 1795, and Barbara Nee, Bab, 1733 to 1816. Pioneer settlers placed by descendants, 1984. Let's see what it says on the back. There's a plaque back here. The Gerberich family in America. Andreas Gerberich arrived at the Port of Philadelphia from the parish of Michael Reith, Lower Franconia, Bavaria, which is Germany, October 1st, 1754. Settling near his brothers in Topahawken Township, Berks County, Pennsylvania, Andreas married Barbara Babb, 1758. They moved here <coughs> along, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> sorry about that, uh, along Swatera Creek in 1762 when this region was part of Hanover Township, Lancaster County. Lebanon County was organized in 1813. Walmers Church, founded in 1750, became the family church of Andreas, Andrew, and Barbara. Their immediate descendants are buried within sight of this memorial, as are the numerous later generations. Andreas is the proj... I can't pronounce that. That's a sad progenitor of the Lebanon County branch of the Gerberich family in America. His brothers Johannes, Jan, and Peter are also that respectively of the law, I don't know if that's like lawyers, of Dolphin and York County branches of this family. Countless descendants of these three brothers migrated throughout the nation following patterns of settlement from these key counties of the Keystone State. That's pretty neat. I was hoping there Walmer's, Peter Walmer's probably buried here. He's probably buried somewhere in here because it'd be, I would assume, like the early, but there's another Revolutionary War vet. He might have been a little too old to serve in the Revolutionary War, but his sons probably weren't. Another Revolutionary War vet right there. And once again, these stones are so worn like a I gotta br start bringing a flashlight along um just uh they say that helps when you're trying to read these things but can't really read them but there's civil war vet and another civil war vet anywho this is uh Walmer's church here in Indian Town Gap and I am going to end the video there. Uh, thank you for coming along. I'm going to go over to H.M. Levitt's Park next and uh, try to do some filming on some of the trails over there. They have a cool, cool nature trail. And they also have like a bird watching station, which probably sort of pointless today because you're not going to have them moving around a whole lot because of the rain. But still a really neat park. It's sort of an undiscovered gem in a lot of ways. Uh, Oh, nice. It's a yellow jacket nest. I just got nailed by a yellow jacket the other day. Not fun. So. All right, cool. We're going to head out. Thank you for coming along. And we will see you about town.